My name is Jennifer Reeder. I'm the director of a short film here in the Bernali competition and also a nominated for a Teddy Award called Blood Below the Skin. It, is, it chronicles a week in the life of three young girls um, leading up to the, to the high school dance as two of the girls fall madly in love. Would you say that your film is, typ is a typical coming of age story or not? Oh, absolutely. It's a. I mean, on the one hand, the coming of age. Um, it's. It, it takes place during that during adolescence, which is always typically thought of as co as the sort of coming of age sort of era. But um, with this film and even the one that I did um, just previous to this, I always the, the adults are also kind of coming of age mm. in a way, you know. So um, I like to ends. <laughs> exactly. So I like to think of these films as being like the suggesting that yeah, the coming of age process is like ongoing, and that adolescence is just one one phase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And was it intentional to cover like all these big political topics? The way I read it, uh, you know, class and race and. You know, politics, was it important for you as a filmmaker to include that into your storytelling or is it just a natural like side effect? No way. I feel like my, you know, even though I make uh, fiction films and even fiction films that are sort of um, poppy with kind of, I don't know, songs and teen girls, uh, I would try to inject some politics, you know, some sense of social, social justice, for instance, you know? And uh, I mean, I'm a, there's another part of my life that's much more clearly kind of activist, but I always, but I also think of these films as having, you know, some activism in them, whether it's injecting them with, yeah, a conversation about feminism or um, gender or sexuality or, yeah, sort of like race class politics. I just don't know why, like, if someone wouldn't take an opportunity to make a statement mm -hmm. at some point if they can, you know, because mm -hmm. films are so powerful in that yeah. regard. Yes. So earlier you said that you did castings in like different high schools in Chicago mm -hmm. and I was wondering how, what's the awareness level of these young people these days in terms of sexuality and their rights and like claiming them, what, how, what did you encounter there? Well, you know, it's like, I mean that's also sort of like one of the, the important aspects of the film is that the adult learns from the, the teenager. Mm -hmm. And uh, at least in the in the U.S. culture, teenagers have no agency. You know, they can't. They have a curfew. They can't gather in public. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's even sort of worse for um, for young men. But they just we just don't put stock in what teenagers are aware of and have experienced and know. So uh, a huge part of this film is is really about. Um, recognizing, validating um, teenagers as, you know, as, a, you know, interesting, curious, challenging humans. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the one of the best parts about um, working with the these teenagers themselves is that they're so smart, like they're really smart, yeah, genuinely interesting, you know, people. And once you on set can sort of like get them talking about what they're interested in, then, you know, like you realize that uh, they know exactly sort of like what's going on around them, you know, and have uh, a real, a real sense of their own sort of, you know, kind of place in the world and their own sort of sense of justice. And they're really kind of exploring, um, the, the yeah their own kind of boundaries in terms of their sort of their, their sexuality and their friendships and you know their own like identity in terms of gender and, and um, race and sort of like where they're you know where they're sort of coming from in terms of the sort of Chicago socioeconomics so um, and sometimes I think you know when we get older <coughs> other things become more important you know you have this family that you t you're taking care of or you have this job that you're taking care of and you sort of forget these kind of essential things that are really about the kind of pol politics of identity and they are like totally invested in it it's like every moment for them mm -hmm. how <clears throat> as a filmmaker how do you create that like necessary atmosphere on set is it like a really traditional set like film set mm -hmm. when you shoot like how does it describe like the, the the atmosphere mm. of your film sets? Well, uh, on the one hand, I didn't go to um, film school. I went to art school. Oh. So my film sets I always feel like I'm just making it up as I'm going, or I'm saying, like, is, are we doing this right? Like, is this, <laughs> is, this how, <laughs> is this what it looks like? Is this what we're doing? So uh, I don't know if it's traditional, but I, I mean, there's usually there's a camera and lights and, you know, me and, ben, and a, a clapper and whatnot. <laughs> um, but the, one of the reasons that we wanted to, to cast actual teenagers is for that authenticity. You know, when you're, ta when you're casting and you ask for, for instance, like a 14-year-old, there's going to be a, an amount of 30-year-olds th who show up, you know, who maybe look 22, but they don't look 14. So 
the minute that you get this group of you know actual teenagers on set, then they you know it, it's a uh, that that whole the whole set sort of comes alive with the kind of like you know giggling and chatter that really exists you know among them and they all got along really well the the three main girls um, I had used in a previous film and so they actually already knew each other and those moments when they they hadn't seen each other for like a year or something like that you know and they don't go to school together mm. so the minute they were back on set together it's like ah! <laughs> running Perfectly, towards each other yeah, yeah, yeah you know and so it was like the real opposite of of I think how so many films and even even television portray especially teenage girls as being like really catty or bitchy or mean, right? Mm. When in fact, you know, they actually, they, they're like a real secret society, mm. you know? And I think it's, you know, they're looking at what's reflected um, back to them in, in media and sometimes that they can absorb that. But the girls that I've worked with are really, they were really generous and sweet with each other and just like, puppies in a way you know like kind of like rolling on top of each other and like really affectionate and you know it's that's what was really sweet to watch and so we were able to kind of like I mean I never rewrote a scene you know like on set or something like that but I'd already experienced some of that energy so kind of like writing a script and and knowing that that energy was going to come to the set and be really authentic was you know it was a great way to work um. <clears throat> The sad thing I think is that the U.S. is in such an intense uh, crisis right now in terms of how the government and politics are treating its young people. Yep. And when a government starts treating its or not paying attention to youth mm. and the future, mm. it gets really dangerous, mm -hmm. I think. And um, you mentioned earlier there's a crisis for men and especially men of color. Mm. And you draw or like create this like really interesting parallel reality to. I mean, if you watch that film, you wouldn't immediately think it's kind of like in this like mainstream U.S. Mm -hmm. context. Right. So what powers do you have as a filmmaker to um, kind of like create these anti-worlds, you know, mm. meaning like opposed to that mainstream U.S. Yeah. thing? Well, I mean, on the one hand, like uh, making a short allows, I mean, it's like I feel like with a, a short film you can kind of break the rules because the audience isn't necessarily, they're already looking at that, a short film um, as though it's out of context, you know? Mm. The audience is already doing some work to kind of fill in mm. some of the narrative, um, not the gaps, but some of these kind of the other narrative elements that in a feature, you know, you just have to explain it all. You gotta yes. put all the parts in there. So I get away with a lot in terms of the form doing, you know, a short. I mean, on the one hand, then shorts don't get to have the theatrical releases of like a feature, so they don't have the exact same kind of um, accessibility. Um, but, uh, you know, again, I just feel like I wanted to, and the, the, this film really was for, um, you know, for the teenagers, like for the people who are in it. I mean, it's had a, a much bigger appeal, you know, or, I mean, this is, in theory, our premiere is today, so in theory, no one has seen it, right? Not, no one in the world has seen <laughs> no this film way. yet. Um, but the film that I did previously that's kind of a companion to it has been widely popular. We just we, um, we screened it a year ago, it premiered at, at Rotterdam, and then it just screened again at Sundance, like just two weeks ago, you know? So it's really had this pretty vibrant life that's mm. been um, exploded up past the sort of teenage audience that I had mm. intended for it. Um, because I think that, the, that a, a, at least American films just get that portrayal of teenage life wrong. And, you yes. know, I remember when I was a teenager, you have, like, music, you have movies you have your friends you know and that's like your religion in a way right yes. if you if you sort of having an awful day you can retreat to your room and like turn on your you know your favorite song or you know you watch your favorite movie for the 400th time you know mm -hmm. and it really is like um, it kind of like can can rejuvenate you in a way that adults do different things, I suppose, to sort of like, <laughs> you know, getting drunk or something like this or whatever. I don't know. But um, which I don't recommend for teenagers, especially in the United States. Uh, so it's I wanted to kind of like, yeah, exactly. So I also wanted to make something that felt like a little a kind of a gift, you know, to mm -hmm. sort of like give give back to them and something that was really, you know, reflecting that sort of girlhood, but reflecting a real specific kind of girlhood, you know, even if it was like for the girls who like other girls, you know, or for the girls who are, who don't like anybody, who are maybe not even boy crazy, because right, so many films in, in the yes. States, at least so many films and so many um, TV, it's, you know, if you're not a boy crazy girl, then, you know, forget about it. And I just think that that's ridiculous. You know, I was not, I wasn't, I wasn't a boy, a boy crazy girl in high school. And I wanted to make a film that was sort of more about like, the girl like me, mm -hmm. you know, because I just think it takes one 
moment or like the, the woman who does the, the young woman who does the monologue in the hallway, you know, about sort of like, I'm not a bitch, I'm not a slut, you know? Like I think that for maybe a girl who's heard those words come back on her, I mean, I'm not to say that like, my film would change someone's life, but maybe for a moment, then you know, it's 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 it um, communicates to a young girl who says, you know what, that's true. Like I'm not a tease, and I'm not a slut, and I'm not going to let someone call me those names, or I'm not going to sort of absorb that identity. You know? Do you feel responsible as an American for your society? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, and I and I know that like that's that's probably pretty rare, right? I mean, I, you know, there's lots and lots of just human citizens, but also filmmakers and artists who, you know, have no interest in a kind of social justice agenda. But I really, I, I don't, I, that would feel so selfish to me, you know, especially because art and literature and, and um, filmmaking and music, you know, when it gets when it gets the message right, mm -hmm. it's like really transformative, you know? I mean, yes. I'm always affected by films that that stick with me um, and really have the ability to kind of like make me think about um, uh, something maybe that's factual and historical or something that's maybe still fictional but is um, a real social issue and make me, you know, really think about, you know, my position um, towards that. And so, you know, those are the kind of films that I also, you know, that I want to make. Mm -hmm. What do you expect from the audience? Do you expect anything or do, do you, do you want to get in like engage in a dialogue? Yeah, you know, I always, so I, I always hope that my films are funny or that there's funny moments, you know? I mean, this one has right? a lot. There's some good funny <laughs> stuff. Say, yeah. <laughs> so we went to the press screening um, the other day, uh, which evidently no filmmakers do because it can be frustrating to watch the press come in and out, but we found everyone sort of stayed in their seats, which was quite nice. Um, but I just wanted to kind of see the projection. I didn't wasn't even looking for a reaction because, of course, the press are supposed to not. They don't clap. They don't. But there were lots of there was lots of laughing. Mm -hmm. So you That's know, good. I thought like, okay, I got I got the some jokes right, and even some laughing with jokes that I don't think are as funny as other jokes. You know, so that kind of reaction. Just knowing that, um, I mean, in the the one that I've done just previous to this too was um, there's another kind of a singing moment in it that's much longer than the singing in in this one, and. Uh, you know, afterwards, in for that film, there's there's at least one person in the audience who comes up just sobbing, you know, who's like, I liked her so much, you know, <laughs> and you know, I don't want to make someone like sad or anything, but God, that like, that's that's so crazy to sort of be able to to in, to like incite that kind of um, like emotional response from someone, you know, for something that's like a weird short fictional film, you know, so yeah. Laughing and crying is always welcome. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank, thank you, you for bringing this film. Yeah, to right the on. Festival. Yeah, cool.